Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we will be talking about higher order derivatives. So let's just jump right into it. What is a higher order derivative? Well, the concept of a higher order derivative is very simple actually. So suppose I tell you that f of x is differentiable. So f of x is differentiable. Differentiable. Okay, so if f of x is differentiable, this would mean that f of x is continuous across all of its points that we are taking the derivative of. So f of x is continuous. Okay, so that means the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. So we discussed this last time. So if f of x is a differentiable function, that would mean that f of x is continuous. And then the derivative of f of x would give me f prime of x. So that would mean that because I found a derivative, it, that means I can keep taking su successive derivatives. So that means I can take the derivative of f prime of x as well. This would give me, we denote this as f double prime of x, or the second derivative of x. And I can keep doing this over and over. So I, if f of x is continuous function, I'm able to differentiate over and over. So for example, derivative of f double prime of x would be f triple prime of x, or the third derivative of f of x. And I can keep going. Now there's one kind of... Uh, issue would be talk about and that's the concept of notation. Typically you write the derivative of f of x as f prime of x. But there are several ways to write this. For example, if I have f of x as a function, then the derivative would be equal to f prime of x. But another way of writing the derivative of f of x is you could say that d over dx of f of x. That's also another way to write the derivative. And then if you had a function that was equal, that says y equals f of x, then you could say that the derivative of y is equal to y prime, for example. So those are different ways to write the derivative of a function. And honestly, there isn't really like a fixed method or anything. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. So if you want to write the derivative as f prime of x, that's fine. If you want to use d over dx of the function, which is the first derivative, you can do that as well. If you want to use y prime, that's okay as well. I'm going to be, I'm going to be using all three of these interchangeably, but the notation doesn't really matter too much. There are a few, there are a few exceptions to this rule, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, that being said, so for example, all I'm saying is that I can keep taking, the point of this is just saying that I can keep taking successive derivatives. So the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. The derivative of f prime of x is f double prime of x. The derivative of f triple, double prime of x is f triple prime of x. And so on. So the only kind of last part we to talk about is what happens when we take the derivative beyond f triple prime of x. Well, that's fine. That just gives us the four deriv derivative. But typically in practice, we don't write four primes. Like, for example, imagine if you take the derivative 100 times, we just draw 100 primes. No, that, that's kind of bad. So typically when we take derivatives beyond three, we usually little, put a little parentheses here and put a four here. And then we would keep doing this for higher order derivatives four and higher. So for example, the fifth derivative of x, we would write this as f f uh, five of x and so on. So this would how this is how we would represent derivative beyond f f uh, triple prime of x and so on and so on. So not too bad. There's nothing too conceptually hard about finding the derivative of a function and derivative of that and so on and so on. So just to kind of wrap up uh, this video, there isn't really too much to talk about at all. We are going to do an example. So suppose I tell you, well, sorry about that. Let me just zoom back in really quickly after I erase this. Okay, so suppose I want to differentiate. So if, so as an example, so suppose f of x is equal to x cubed minus x. 
So this this example is saying find f prime of x and f double prime of x. So nothing particularly complicated. So as I mentioned, if we take the derivative of f of x, we get f prime of x. And if we take the derivative of f prime of x, we get f double prime of x. And we could keep going, but I'm not going to. So we, we know how to find a derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so we can go ahead and plug all this in. So if we do that, we get, so let me just go ahead and plug it in. So if we do that, we get the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, let's see, we get x plus h all cubed minus x plus h. And then minus, let's see, we get x cubed minus x. And then we're going to divide all of this. So divide. Well, that didn't work out so well. So divide. Oh, my line seems to not be working here today. There we go. Divided by h. So I'll let, I'll go ahead and do the algebra out. So if you do that, we get the limit as h approaches 0 of, let's see, on the top, we're going to have to expand everything out. So if you go ahead and expand this, we're going to get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's good. Minus x minus h minus x cubed plus x. And then we're going to divide all of this by h. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you go in and do that, we we notice that this cancels, this cancels, this minus x cancels, and this x cancels. So now we get the limit as h approaches zero of let's see, we get three x squared h plus three x h squared plus h cubed minus h. Okay, now if you go ahead and divide all of this by h, okay, the h is now cancelled, so we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3x h plus h, let's see, squared, and the minus 1. And then if you go ahead and pl plug in 0, we get 3x squared minus 1. So that is the first derivative. So this thing right there is f prime of x. So nothing too crazy. Now at this point, we, take, we need the second derivative. So the second derivative remember as i'm and i'm going to use my new notation here is the derivative of the first derivative so this is i used this notation just a moment ago this is just saying the derivative of something so i'm taking the derivative of the first derivative to get the second derivative hopefully that should make some sense so if you go ahead and do this well we want we know how to take a derivative so we get the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so if you go ahead and take the derivative of that, we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times x plus h all squared minus 1 minus, let's see, that's going to be 3x squared minus 1. Then let's see, divide that by h. And then if I go ahead and substitute this in, we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 1, uh, not plus, minus 3x squared plus 1. So this is what happens when you go ahead and expand the numerator. So on the denominator, we just have an h. And then, of course, this cancels, this cancels, this minus 1 cancels, and this plus 1 cancels. So we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared divided by h, and then the h is cancel. So now we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 6x plus 3h, and this gives us 6x. So just to kind of summarize what we did, f of x was given as x cubed minus x, the first derivative, we found out just a moment ago, it was 3x squared minus 1. 
and then the second derivative, well, we can see it's equal to 6x. And we could actually use the file, find a third derivative as well. But we don't need to use the definition of derivative, derivative to do it. We know that, for example, if you wanted to find a third derivative, we know that 6x is just a straight line, which kind of looks like something like this. So something like that. And the slope of this line is, of course, equal to 6x. Or, sorry, not the, the, the slope of the line is equal to 6, because it's written in the form y equals mx plus b. And then we have y equals mx, or y equals 6x, which implies that the slope is 6. So that means the third derivative of x is equal to 6. And, of course, as you will learn later, that if you go ahead and take the derivative of a constant, you're going to get zero. And intuitively, that should kind of make sense. If I have a constant, well, the constant is just going to look something like this. Constants don't have any kind of slope. So that means if I were to take the derivative of this, so we get the fourth derivative of x, that's just going to be zero. And for and in later videos, you'll see how to compute derivatives very, very quickly using certain rules and properties. But other than that, there isn't really much else to talk about. There's one last thing I will discuss, and that is the concept of physics. So we know that, we know what distance is. Distance is just how much, you know, you traveled in the given amount of time. And we know that velocity is equal to distance over time. And we should hopefully know from basic physics that acceleration is the change in velocity. So change, in, uh, so, yeah, change in velocity. So, as you can kind of see, there's kind of a diff there's kind of a difference between velocity and acceleration. It's kind of related, isn't it? Well, it turns out that the derivative of displacement is velocity, and a displacement of velocity is acceleration. So the derivative. So let me just go ahead and write that down. Actually, so the derivative of displacement. is equal to velocity, then the derivative of velocity, so the derivative of velocity is equal to acceleration, and the derivative of acceleration, you might not notice, but the derivative of acceleration is called the jerk. Not literally like, oh, you're a sort of jerk, nothing like that. <laughs> um, but the idea is that the derivative of displacement gives you velocity, the change in velocity gives you acceleration, and the change in acceleration is something called jerk. Beyond that, there are definitions per se, but they're not physically meaningful or anything, so we're not gonna talk about those. But that's about the closest as you can get as an quote unquote application of higher order derivatives. This will become a little bit more important when we talk about the concept of Taylor polynomials, but as of now, there isn't too much to really discuss in higher order derivatives. So the gist of this video is just saying that if I take the derivative of a function, I am allowed to take the derivative of that function as well, and I can take the derivative of that, and that, and that, and so on and so on. And then if I take derivatives beyond three, I just have the fourth derivative, the fourth, the fifth derivative, and so on. And I don't use the prime notation to, to kind of denote them. I use number four, number five, and so on in parentheses. And notation is also relevant in some cases. So for example, I could say that f prime of x is derivative, but I, call, but I could also say that the derivative of a function with respect to x of a function, I could also say that that's the derivative y prime that's also another way of saying the derivative so they're all kind of the same thing but other than that that's it there are, that's all there is to higher order deriv derivatives so oh and of course yeah the three kind of applications in physics discussing velocity acceleration jerk and how they're related in terms of uh, in terms of higher order derivatives but yeah aside from that there isn't really too much to talk about so with that i will see you in the next video if, if this video helped you, just remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thank you all so much.